And so here we are, the last day of the workshop. And I just want to know, are there general questions from yesterday's tutorial or something that we can help clarify? For those of you that were installing the tools in your laptops, um, did you need any help or no or questions <laughs> that we can ask, answer today? Um, so you know, if you are going back, just let us know. You know what needs to to be done. Okay, so if we go to the program with slides, I added the Slepsy slides. Are there? Um, as I'm gonna show you, Slepsy is a is a project that is being developed at the University of um, Valencia in Spain. So uh, normally we invite one of them to participate. But this year, you know, it falls. I mean, it's always a time. One of them has to give up their vacation time because this is people are, are off the whole month of August in, in Spain, and it was tough to compete with their vacation spots this year. So, so I'm going to give the talk, and it's based on slides that they sent to me, and that's why they were a little bit late to come on our website. Okay. Osni, what, what else did you ask me? All right, so please, we, we have been receiving already some feedback, you know, on the, on the website. And feel free, if you already fill the, web, the form and you want to send additional, feel free to do that. And for those of you that haven't filled out the survey, please try to do it uh, sometime, even next week, you know, when you're at home and you think more about it. Okay, so... Today we are going to talk about the scalable library for eigenvalue problems. Um, what I'm going to do is that first I'm going to start, you know, looking at what what is SLEPC and what SLEPC can do, uh, and we are going to talk about some of the computational problems that are targeted by SLEPC. Then I'm going to go into the individual interfaces in the library, in the SLEPC library. Unfortunately, you know, one of the things is that as a user of SLEPC, I can ans answer you some of the questions. I know how to install. I have some experience with Petsy, and I understand some of the things. But when it comes to decisions that, they, uh, that the developer, Jose Roman, actually made on the, on the libraries, you know, I will have to take your questions if you have, you know, that kind of uh, question and then get back to you. And and then we'll talk a little bit about additional features in SLEPC. And if I have time, I'll give you a short demo. I have tested the uh, tutorials. So there is a tutorial. So you know, this afternoon at the end, if there is time and you still want to spend time, I'll, I'll be around and we can try some of the uh, hands-on sessions. But there is not going to be a specific scheduled hands-on session on, on SLEPC. So as I mentioned earlier, this is a project that was developed at the University, Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. And the lead developer is Jose Roman, who uh, visited us uh, for a while. He spent some time working with the Petsy team and is part of the Petsy development team. And it's actually Petsy considers, you know, uh, Slepsy their eigenvalue problem uh, library. So if you have specific questions about um, you know, the library, this is where you can get it. So Slepsy Slepsy main uh, grip pack. You know, and Jose is, is, although he's on vacation, he does reply too. So he tries to keep up with, with everything. So he's away, but not really away. So this is the, the, um, the home page. During the demo, I will show you, but you know, this basically has, you know, uh, HTML base, uh, examples and all the documentation is online. There are several papers also that discuss in detail some of the design choices that went into the library and some of the algorithmic choices that they implemented. And, and so you can look at the hands-on that Jose has, but this is sort of like a, an older version of the hands-on. Um, the one today, since we are using the, the latest version of Petsy, and they just had a new release of Slepsy, which is Slepsy 3.3. So if you just replace this by 3, 
you can get it on, on Carver. So that's available. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what solvers are new in, in the library. And on this change, sorry, let me change that. So you will have to update your, your slides. This is now EPS examples. Yeah, there used to be a single repository with all the SLEPC examples. Now they did the same thing as Petsy to divide it according to, you know, if you're, it's an eigenvalue problem, if it's a singular value of the composition, or depending on what you are working. Okay, so on the first day I show you this, this table. So let's see where Petsy, uh, Slepsy uh, fits. We talked about that the main target here is uh, sparse, uh, <coughs> linear algebra. So it's going to provide solutions for the generalized and the standard eigenvalue problem. We're going to talk about singular value uh, problems. Um, and that's what uh, Slepsy is going to, to provide some of the functionality. Again, if you have the dense case, then you, you would try uh, Scalipack or some of the other libraries that Osni uh, mentioned on the first day. So what are the computational problems that we are trying to address with, with Slepsy? So mainly we're going to talk about the eigenvalue solvers, some spectral transformations that may improve the convergence of our eigenvalue solvers. We're going to talk about the singular value decomposition solvers and quadratic eigenvalue solvers. So, you know, we are going to take a look at what Slepsy has inside this library. So let's start with the eigenvalue solvers. So just a little bit of background of what we're going to be talking, and later we are trying to connect this with you know, some of the design choices and some of how the abstract interface in, in SLEPC works. So first of all, we can say that, you know, we have this standard eigenvalue solver or a generalized eigenvalue solver, eigenvalue problem, sorry. And where, you know, our eigenvalues are scalars and then we have our eigenvectors, which, um, you know, they can be, we, we, when a collection of, Scalars, and this can be, you know, double precision, single precision. And I don't know if, um, if Matt showed that, but when you configure your PETC implementation, that's when you specify, you know, which precision that you want to use. If you want to use do double precision, you want to use complex arithmetic, then automatically, once you configure your PETC, all that you have to do is go to the SLEPC directory and configure SLEPC, and that's what you will get. So the metrics A and B can be real or complex. Metrics A and B can be unsymmetric, Hermitian. Uh, matrices uh, B typically is symmetric, positive, uh, definite, or semi-definite. So what is the solution? The solution is that we are going to, NEV, by the way, it stands for the number of eigenvalues that we are going to compute, and we are going to number them from zero to any V minus one, and we are gonna have the corresponding set of uh, eigenvectors. So what are the computational requirements? We may be interested on the few dominant eigenvalues, or we may be interested in computing, you know, some of the, uh, the eigenvalues with the smallest or the smallest real part, or we may wanna compute all the eigenvalues that are in a given range. So this is sort of like, you know, the different possibilities that we can address with uh, these uh, solvers. So now let's look at the spectral transformation. So here the idea is that we want to improve, you know, our convergence for some of these eigenvalue problems. So, so here we move from our original system to a transform system. And in, in this transformation, what is going to happen is that the eigenvalues are modified, but we have a simple relationship, so we know how to, to get back our original eigenvalues from the transform eigenvalues. But our eigenvectors are always the same. So there are three possibilities, or there, there are a number of possibilities, but in the SLEPC context, we are going to consider three of them. And that's the shift of origin. We can do a shift and invert, or we can do the scaly uh, approximation as well. Transformations. All right. So what happens is that, 
you know, that T um, or transformation, their metrics is not built specifically. So this is sort of what is going to connect in SLEFC to our PETC uh, library, but we don't explicitly, or they don't explicitly build the, the metrics A. So another kind of solvers are going to be the uh, singular value decomposition solvers, mm -hmm. where we have a set of singular values. We have our left uh, vectors and our right uh, singular vectors. So our solutions, you know, as we expect, is a set of um, NSV, or you know, the number of singular value vectors. And uh, we're going to obtain also a number of uh, right and left uh, singular. So what are the computational requirements? Here you may, you may be interested in computing just a few, the smallest or the largest uh, singular values. Or you may want to compute an uh, uh, eigenproblem. Or, the f or, or you may want to solve this, this other problem. Or there are some options with uh, bio diagonalization, which is also available in, in SLEFC. Lastly, we have the quadratic problem, which has the equation has this form. So here we have three, three matrices, sorry, M, C, and K matrices. And again, we have our set of uh, our eigenvalue and our eigenvector corresponding to that eigenvalue. And our matrices can be real or complex. They can also be symmetric or unsymmetric. Typical, some of the metrics are symmetric, positive, semi-definite, or definite metrics. So what solutions do we expect? So we should also expect to obtain a, a set, uh, uh, the eigenvalue and eigenvectors, uh, the pair of eigenvalue eigenvectors. And, but now, the number of eigenvalues that we are going to compute is the double of, of them. And we have two different options for, to, uh, there, there are actually now implemented a, a number of ways to linearize this, this problem, and I'm going to show that when we get to the SLEFC interface. And, or use the, you know, the uh, Arnoldi uh, method. So, is this first part clear, or are there any questions? So Eric and Austin, I think are where the quadratic eigenvalue problems show up. When uh, in engineering, where we have dumping, sometimes uh, I know that, um, for example, in cinema analysis, helicopter blades is kind of very nonlinear. That also is quadratic. <laughs> so, so the idea here is that, you know, what, what went into the design considerations? First of all is that we needed to target, or they needed to target real, real and complex, you know, and Hermitian and non-Hermitian uh, problems. Um, with a single user interface, you know, how can we express, or in an abstract way, compose, um, specify the different, the kind of problems that we talk about, and you know, extend really this kind of uh, formulations to other kinds of, of problems, and you know. So what are the characteristics? So as I mentioned, has a unique abstract user interface. So, and is very similar to what you have seen already in Petsy. So. The idea here is that there is a whole set of functionality and algorithms that you can twin, uh, tweak, parameters, implementations, but all goes to the same uh, single interface. So if you remember what I'm talking about here is like in Petsy, like for instance, if you don't specify what your KSP or your linear solver is, then Petsy makes a default. And you can start changing parameters. You know, you can say what the, the your, um, GM-RAS, you can set the restart, you can set your tolerance value. 
So similarly, that you can do in, in SLEPC. Now, um, spectral transformations, they are going to work with the eigenvalue problems only. So the user really doesn't have access to the spectral transformations by itself. But um, the nice thing here is that the abstract inf information, so you're using this, the spectral transformation in this context to help you uh, with the conversion, so the problem that you're trying to solve. So SLEPC doesn't give you access to, to the spectral transformation directly, but it returns you know, a more robust uh, solution. And you may need to solve recurrent linear solvers. That means that you know, internally, there have to be places where you will save some information for some of the vectors and also do an optimal uh, you know, allocation of these uh, matrices. For the singular value and the quadratic eigenvalue problems, they can be obviously solved by an association with an eigenvalue problem. Okay, so what is SLEPC? So SLEPC, you know, like PETC, the goal was to create this sparse, scalable uh, solvers. So the idea was why to build, you know, all your matrices, vectors, and all your um, basic linear algebra uh, hooks <coughs> if PETC already had something in place. So that's why sort of it's built on top of PETC. And the Korean version is the 3.3, which was just recently released. And there are three uh, new solvers. This is the first time that they are implemented a conjugate gradient-based uh, solver in the library. And this is the, the Skrylov Shure also that is part of the, of the, of the library. So when we talk about uh, Petsy, if you remember, Petsy had everything classified, vectors, matrices, uh, linear solvers, nonlinear solvers, time steppers, and everything was sort of an, like an object-oriented kind of approach. Although everything is written in NCC standards, so it's, there is nothing uh, C++ or so Fortran 90 here. They do provide interfaces to C++. There are interfaces to Fortran 90 or any flavor of Fortran for that matter. So, um, later, I'm, I'm going to go into more detail on what the use of the subjects are. But if we think of the, the first object in SLEPC is this EPS, and it's the object that is going to allow us to access the whole selection of eigenvalue uh, uh, problem solvers that are in SLEPC. So it's going to allow me to describe the problem. You know, that means that I could specify some of the parameters that are related to the specific algorithm that I'm going to use to solve the problem. And, you know, also um, view some of the information, performance information. I will do it through this, this object as well. Something that um, I haven't mentioned, so, you know, the same as in Petsy. Uh, you haven't seen a single line or, or any thing that makes reference to the programming model that is underlined. But obviously, this is addressing algorithms that are implemented sequentially or algorithms that are implemented in parallel. And all the parallelism is, hide, is hidden from the user. The second object in SLEPC is the spectral transform, or ST object. You know, and as I mentioned, this is the only object that I mean, you cannot access from the outside. There are, there are ways that you can modify that object. You know, and this is going to be your connection to the Petsy uh, Krilov subspace uh, methods. So uh, the ST is also always associated to an EPS, and we'll see that uh, shortly. You know how that that works. The next object, obviously, is the singular value decomposition object, and you know it allows you, uh, in an abstract way, to describe your singular value decomposition problem. Uh, and provides a transparency, uh, uh, transparent ac access to the eigensolvers for associated <coughs> eigenproblems to this single value decomposition. The last one is the quadratic eigenvalue problem. 
And similarly, you know, allows you how you're going to describe your, your problem. You know, you can view some of the parameters. You can also set up some uh, specific uh, tuning parameters for the uh, QEP. So if we were to see on, the, on your left, you have the Betsy sort of uh, numerical functionality, what is available. And then SLEPS is sort of like an extension of that functionality. And if you look, it's, it's all sort of like, these are sort of like your basic elements, you know, your matrices, your vectors, these are your operators in Petsy, your vectors, and these are your preconditioners with our pair with uh, Krilov subspace methods. Or other options, we saw that you can call external packages, you know, like uh, SuperLU, or you can call um, Scalipack, LAPack, depending on the, or MOMPS, you know, any of the other solvers that you may need uh, to call using the, the right uh, choices between uh, the grid of space and preconditioners. And this is going to be key here. So yes? So you said earlier that the user doesn't have to access with a spectral transformation object, but it doesn't prevent them to specify parameters for. Exactly, right. So you don't have. What I meant by direct access is that, for instance, you cannot use, um, out of the EPS context, you cannot use the, the TS. Okay. But obviously, you will be able to set your solver, for instance, your solver type. Yeah, I'm talking about the parameter for the transformation, like uh, the shifting parameter. Or the, the right, parameter. right. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. You know, um, what I know is that currently they have only connected to the KSP library. The KSP, which is only the, the, the grid of subspace. Uh, actually, they should have advanced. So this is how in Petsy everything is built. So they are, they are currently connected with this KSP. I haven't seen any option for the, for the nonlinear yeah, solvers. But perhaps there is a way to, to do it, because if you think of the linear solver, I mean, you can, your, the linear part, you know, will be using one of these methods. And then you will have to, I'll have to look into that, you know, because maybe you can have a callback. You can say your KSP is your own, uh, or your own preconditioner, and then you can do that. Perhaps you can implement that yourself. And all that you have to pass, you know, is just the, re the return from the, from the product. Back to Right, right. So, so, the, 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 so how do we extend this library is, is, is one, one way to think about it. Is that, yes, with this basic um, sort of interfaces, you can produce more complex uh, solvers. The difference between what they have there is that in most cases, you know, they just don't build on top. Obviously, there are a lot of, you know, optimization um, that goes into implementation of the specific methods. But you can think that you, you could do that. You could perhaps do that, yeah. And there have been successful cases, you know, when people do extend their libraries and that implementation goes into, into the, their code and the parts that they then maintain. So, you know, and SLEPC also has sort of like, like the same uh, hierarchy in which uh, you can think that, for instance, all the eigensolvers can use uh, spectral transformations. So, you know, they're, they're, and the SVD eventually call the eigensolvers, and the quadratic eventually call the eigensolvers as well. So, why is this important? Do you remember how in Petsy, when you run an example, for instance, that is, uh, uh, that involves um, uh, KSP, uh, linear solver, you have access to information about the matrices, the vectors, but there is nothing about the linear solvers because you are not using the linear solvers. Once, if you are using a nonlinear solvers, then, sorry, when you're using a nonlinear solver, then you have access to all your KSP data, uh, parameter tuning, you have your matrices, you can specify everything that is below uh, that, that hierarchy here. And similarly, when the time steps, you can go all the way. You, know, you can ask Petsy for individuals. You can generate different viewers. 
And one thing that I don't remember if Matt uh, talked about was the MATLAB interface, which is you know very useful for especially if you set your problems or you want to generate your matrices in MATLAB, then you can just chip them to to Petsy, or you can do you know like your results from Petsy, you can also send them uh, to a MATLAB interface where you can do a lot of uh, nice things with it. And because you can do it with Petsy, you can do it with Swiftsy as well. And because you know the objects that SLIPC sort of uses is that the hierarchy will come this way. So you also have accesses to all the matrices and the vectors that are available in Petsy. OK. Are these concepts clear? Because now we're going to see what, what the functionality and how the functionality works. OK. So how do we solve an eigenvalue problem with SLEPSI? So there are the usual steps. One is that we had to declare one of the EPS objects and create that EPS object. And then we define our eigenvalue problem. We have some options you know, that we can sort of decide what type of eigenvalue solver do we want to use and what parameters with that eigenvalue solver. Am I interested in the largest, uh, uh, the smallest eigenvalue? I'm interested in the whole spectrum. And then we just call the eigensolver, retrieve the computed information, and destroy it. Remember that, it, that it's good to, to destroy it always because you may need memory later on in your code. And everything that is temporary storage, if you don't destroy it, it doesn't go away. So it will only go away in the minute that you destroy the objects. Yes? So this is still for the Pepsi spirit that you don't specify the in the code the so, right, so the, and we're going to see that next, but so that's a good question. The question is, you know, if it follows the Petsy uh, spirit that you can specify things in your code and you can do it on the command line. So there are two things also, so it's the same with Petsy. If you happen to specify uh, certain things hard-coded in your code, like for instance, I want GMRES with Block Jacobi preconditioner, and you set that in your code, if just before the solve you had, you know, uh, set KSP from options, or you set the KSP from options, anything that you type in the command line is going to overwrite that behavior, the previous behavior. So it's similar here. So it's, it's exactly the same. So the solvers are going to have some default parameters. There is a solver, uh, default uh, KSP type, but you can modify that behavior through the command line. OK, so let's take a look at our first example. So you know, these are our friends that we already know, our mat, which is uh, the Petsy mat element, and our vec, uh, our vectors. And we have our um, EPS solver. And we have our, um, our eigenvalue, where, uh, where we are going to have our eigenvalues. So, this is sort of like our declar declaration, or what I meant by declaration. So something that, this is what, what, I, what I sort of like of this interface, is that you know, the same code could be used in different contexts. You know, and it's, and it's going to be exactly the same, same line. This doesn't tell you anything about if you're working with complex arithmetic, real double precision. So it's really you know, the way that I compile or install Petsy, what gives the the, the, the sense of the arithmetic that we are using for that particular problem. And so the first thing is that we create the object. We set some of the operators, A, B. And I'm going to go into detail uh, about this instruction. Then we specify the, the problem side. So this is the instruction. If I say EPS set from options, this can modify any of this behavior that I said, that previously set. And Another thing to observe is that we use the Petsy uh, com world. Okay. And some people will ask, you know, what's the difference between using the Petsy com world and the, um, and the MPI? You could use the MPI directly. But the thing is that maybe your com world, what you have to set to the com world, you may only want a subset of those, and that's what you're using for your Petsy com world. And also, you know, in the future, if, if uh, one moves away from that programming paradigm, 
maybe you know this will have a different uh, meaning you know of what what it is so it's it's a good practice to always use the the Betsy another thing that I recommend is using also always the Betsy scalar you know because in the case that is a uh, complex arithmetic you don't have to go and modify your code and put complex there but you could actually you know just do all that translation through the Betsy scanner Betsy int is another thing. You know, some of the integers are represented in 32 or 64. So if you use Betsy int, you know that it's consistent throughout the code. Okay. And then we just do our EPS solve. And so we get some convergence uh, information, the number of how many uh, convert eigenvalues we get. And we just start retrieving the the eigenpairs, our vectors and our solvers, uh, no, uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And then we destroy our object. <coughs> okay. And by the way, this is, this is one of the, uh, this is for the uh, generalized no Hermitian eigenvalue problem uh, flag. And similarly, there are other options. So what is currently available? And uh, one is this, uh, the power, the uh, Q, uh, RQI and the power iteration, the subspace iteration with Raleigh reads projection, an all the method with explicit restart and deflation. So that's something that you have to know that, that Betsy, the Arnoldi implementation has deflation and there. The Lanchos method, also explicit restart with deflation. Um, here there are some possibilities, you know, options that you can uh, do you can do reorthogonalization local, partial, periodic, or full? Um, so this is the default. So if you don't specify anything, Betsy is going to use this uh, Krilov sure solver, uh, some preconditioned solvers, the generalized Davison, Jacobi Davison for non Hermitian. New are these the uh, the what I mentioned the Raleigh Cotton uh, CG the GD2 and the indefinite uh, Krylov, uh, sure, for indefinite problems. Okay, so what do I need to do? So here we are solving eigenvalue problems that can be the standard or the generalized. So obviously in the standard eigenvalue problems, we don't have use for the matrix uh, B, so this matrix is set to Petsy null, okay? So it's the same interface, just that we say Petsy null here. But if we are solving a generalized second value problem, then this matrix is, the, our problem is specified to the matrix A and the matrix B. Okay, so some of the options for the problem type. So we can say that it's Hermitian. And this is sort of what the, 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 your, your value that you will put uh, here. Oops. And this is your, your command line option at runtime, yes. This may be a uh, stupid what if question. There are no stupid questions. Okay. So what happens if I don't set up your Betsy number, but set like an identity matrix if I just want to solve a identity problem? Uh, sorry? If I set B to be a, an identity matrix, so. Like, oh. Um, so what, what happens if I do that? You mean if, if you. You're starting to solve a standard problem, eigen problem, and you set this to, to E. Mm. Right, so I think it will be, it works. I mean, it will be actually using yeah. this, but yeah, what Petsy does internally, I don't know. Yeah, so what, do you affect the performance? You know, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know because, yes, probably it will try to perform some multiplications. I don't know if they have a detection to realize that it's an identity matrix. Yeah. Because, yeah, that, that, that's, that's a very good question. There are a lot of things that we haven't talked, you know, that are under the hat of these interfaces. And if you notice, here we are completely not talking about the metrics products that are involved here or the interprocess communication. So the question was, if we, if we said that we are solving a generalized second value problem, but our B matrix is set to the identity matrix, what happens? And unless they are doing something special for that case, which I'm not aware. This will be uh, distributed. The metrics will be distributed, or you know, st storage is going to be allocated, and you will have that product, you know, a necessary product uh, perform. Okay. 
Any questions for this? For this guy? No. Okay. So, you know, so the, at, at runtime, this is just an example of how you use it at, at runtime. So you will use this flags, the EPS Hermitian, to change the behavior to any. Or you can say, I'm interested on in six eigenvalues, and I want the tolerance to be e to the minus eight. So this you can set. And the program will be the program or the code that you're, your actual uh, code. So what information? Remember that we saw that Petsy had the uh, KSP view for the linear solvers. You can do mat view, you can do vec view to see the, some properties of the vectors, matrices, linear solvers, nonlinear solvers. So this is the information that we get from the Slepsy uh, view. So first it's gonna tell us you know, uh, what type of problem it was uh, solving, what method did it use, and then it gives you some of the options, you know, of, of what. Um, and then at the end, it tells us also, you know, some information about um, what the defaults of that, that object uh, were. So what other things can we do? We can ask EPS plot eigenvalues, and it's going to plot the eigenvalues that, that it managed to compute. And this is very similar. You remember how in Petsy we we sort of plotted the, the, the tolerance values. Something that I, I had in mind on and, and Wednesday, and I forgot, was that you know when, when we look at the residual of the KSP solvers, because Petsy uses um, uh, left preconditioning. So the residual that you're looking at is not the residual of the original uh, system, but is the, is the precondition system. Petsy has options that you can ask for the actual preconditioner. So that's also you know, important to know for it. So Petsy actually does that under the hat for you. So what you, if you ever see it, these are the actual related to the eigenvalue problem that you're trying to solve. So profiling, you can do a log summary. So what Petsy is gonna, uh, Slepsy is gonna do is that it's gonna add information about the eigenvalue solvers to the profile information. That includes memory use, uh, your flops, and you know, time that it took per processor to execute certain routines. Everything that you, when you do the profile, uh, Betsy log summary, it sort of uh, gives it to you. You can also debug by saying, you know, start in debugger and, you know, or do a malloc dump, you know, which will give you some information about your, um, your uh, footprint, you know, what actually was allocated and used in the, so it's not the memory footprint, but it's the memory allocation. Uh, Sort of traces. Okay, so another thing that you can do is that you can do you can look at the convergence of the different eigenvalues, you know, and so you can do that by uh, you know using this EPS monitor. It's very similar to the KSP monitor that you saw, or the SNS monitor, and you can actually say uh, ask uh, the program to draw it for you. The uh, draw Interfaces, you know, as in the past it's good that you use this draw pass, you know, equal to something. So otherwise, it, the minute that it displays it and the program ends, it quits the interface. So the pause has, you know, for a few seconds. How many seconds do you want to wait? So you can get this, this image. Another thing is that if you don't want to do it, you know, online, you can also ask to put it in a file, you know, with the KSP view. And that file, you can put it, chip it to MATLAB and do some nice, uh, graphics with your MATLAB interface. So what if we want to improve the convergence of the, of the, um, of the solvers? Then we use the spectral transformations. And so and we are going to use the ST object, as we mentioned uh, before. So the T is actually something that the user um, will have access or will be able to set some parameters to, but you will not have that T, uh, the values of that T. You will not be able to recover the values of that, of that T. So some of the options are, uh, you know, these are the different um, spectral transformations that we can use, shift, fall, the uh, shift and invert, and precondition, and you know, for the standard, this is what you will be building, and for the generalized, this is what 
the matrix will look like. Okay, so how do I modify the behavior of the of the default uh, shift? So, um, did you see the example of a precondition uh, a linear solver using a preconditioner in Petsy? How to change the preconditioners? So, you know the the uh, the spectral transformation is very similar to a preconditioner in Petsy. So it's another interface. You know that you don't create the preconditioner. What you do is that when you create your KSP, the KSP has you know sort of like a, um, a sub object, which is that preconditioner associated with that. So in this case, it's the same. All this uh, uh, the C objects, the the uh, eigenvalue solver, the EPS has a KS, uh, TS, ST, sorry, associated with it. So you ask Petsy uh, to to give it to you or Slepsy to give it to you with the EPS get ST, so then you have the object already. And now you can say ST get uh, KSP, and from the ST, then you have now access to your linear solver. This is your PETC linear solver, okay? And from here, you can actually get the preconditioner, okay? You can also, then you will use the PETC instructions to say get PC, okay? Is that clear? So that's how you, you will be able to modify the behavior, you know, going from the eigenvalue problem that you're trying to solve, you get to the spectral transformation and details on the spectral transformation. So that's where if you really wanted to use, for instance, SuperLU or, you know, MOMS or any other solver that is available, this is the, you will have to get, you know, you get your KSP and then once you get your KSP, you can say to Petsy, you set your KSP type to none and precondition only. So then, you know, you set your precondition equal to mumps, your precondition equal to super LU, and, you know, and voila. Okay. So the same, you know, you have also, you can control this at runtime. You can say, you know, what your EPS type is, your SD is shift, and you know, you can control the different uh, options uh, to, to here. So these examples are in the tutorial, you know, and, and actually they are self-explanatory what they do in more detail. Okay, so now, uh, any questions with the um, eigenvalue solvers? Yes? Yeah, you can get them. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't. Yeah, but it's one of the things that you you get out. Um, I think you get a residual vector back. Where is this guy? And then you you can you can also ask for that that information. Yeah. Yeah, there was another question. Yes. Where are the tutorials for? Oh, so I'll 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 walk you through. So it's, it's, yeah, so why don't I write it? So it's gonna be, uh, oh, so what, better yet, why don't you just do, do, uh, you know, module load um, slab C, slab C uh, 3.3 G or O. You know, the difference between these two is that this is, was compiled with optimization and this one is for debugging purposes. And then you can just go, uh, you can copy uh, dollar. It's the same, you know, as PETC, they have uh, slip C dear slash source slash, in this case, we are, we are using EPS. And if you copy examples, under examples you have two. You have uh, the tests that are run when you install the software, and the other one is this uh, tutorial. And this is the, the one, the examples that you're gonna see are, are related to these tutorials uh, uh, page. Okay. Um, something that you know I, I didn't mention before and I forgot was that um, 
let's say you have Petsy already installed, you want to install Slepsy, you download Slepsy, you set your, uh, you know, which the module, in this case, for the Carver users, the module Slepsy does it for you, sets your Petsy dir and your Petsy arc variables. Those are the only things that you have to set, and then you drive configure, Slepsy, and then make, and it's done in no time. So it's, it really doesn't require much because it's going to read the Petsy configurations and then configure itself. But this is basically where these files are. Okay, so similarly, how do we solve an SVD? So you're gonna go a little bit faster here. So we basically declare our SVD uh, object and we create that object, we define the problem, set some options, we can do it in the program or at wait and do it at on, online. Then we invoke the solver, retrieve the computer solution and we destroy that object. So, the code looks like you know the, the same. So this this time we're using the SVD object. We have our left and right singular vectors, and we have a singular value s. And uh, so we do the create uh, set operators, set from options. So this is going to change any behavior associated with that, and we solve it. And then get converge, and this is the number. That have been that have converged. It returns the number that have been converged, and then we just start printing the uh, obtaining the, the triplet uh, values, and then we destroy it, our solvers. Obviously, there there are a lot more information. If you have the viewers, if you look at the viewers, look at the options of the viewers of what kind of information you can get out from it. So what is available in the singular value? So you have the cross product metrics, you know, which uh, works with any EPS eigensolver, cyclic matrix also with any EPS object. There's the golov kahan lanches by the organization with explicit restart and deflation. And the, the golov kahan lanches with a thick restart and deflation. So how do you do it? It's very similar. You do the SVD set operators. You know, you pass your matrix A and you know set from options. This is the one that is going to take your command line. And you can do SVD view to get some uh, additional information. Okay, so now for the quadratic again by the problem is very similar. You know, we declare our object, we create our object. We define the eigenvalue problem. We also have a set of parameters that we can do before the solver phase. Uh, then we retrieve the computer and we destroy the object. So um, now we use our object uh, and we have our eigenvectors and the residual and we have the corresponding eigenvalue uh, pairs. And so we create our object. The, we have our matrices M, C, and K, which were defined as Petsy mats before. And we said, in this case, we are, we are using a general uh, quadratic uh, problem. And uh, this is where we set it from the command line. If we want to alter any of the behavior of that solver, we solve the problem and get the number of converge uh, and we sort of um, iterate to get the actual uh, values. You know, the, so it's interesting because in both Petsy and Slepsy, remember, because you cannot do, you don't have access to, to the matrices themselves. You don't have access to the IJ component of the matrix or your vector VI. So that's why you also always have to go through this interface to get the, the, the actual uh, components, okay? 
So the functionality that are currently available is that you know, to, for the linearization, you can do a non-symmetric, uh, symmetric, Hamiltonian, or you can use the uh, uh, Arnoldi. So, and the choices in this case would be, you know, for the general, this will be sort of your flag, which is the one that we use in the example. And at runtime, you can just say, you know, you set your type to general or Hermitian, or they have this uh, gyroscopic uh, option as well. Oh, sorry. One thing that is important, yes, is to set the, the matrices. So in here, we have three operators. We have a matrix A, C, and K, and we have to set them uh, at this point. And obviously, depending on the problem, you know, one of those matrices can be no. Okay. So similarly, we have the set from options. So it will take the command line options. We can do uh, the view, or which is similar to the uh, view command line as well. And, and then set this, uh, yeah, the companion form. So another thing for, for the subspace generation, you know, that you can do with uh, uh, Petsy, uh, Slepsy, sorry, is that you can set up the EPS set initial subspace you know, that's one of the options that you can do. You can also do the deflation subspace. So you can provide an initial trial subspace for Slepsy. This could come, you know, from previous computations or something that you already know and you want to start or you may have a good idea of where to start. Uh, and these are just a few assumptions. So, what are some of the highlights of the library? You know, so if you look at uh, Spetsy, it's easy to, to extend and build a lot of functionality. Um, the nice thing is that, for instance, they were able to integrate you know, the complexity of the algorithms to change you know, going from the standard or generalized to the shift uh, or transform versions without really the user having to do that setup. Everything is, is done for you. But if you do need to manipulate the solvers, you can do that. You, you can go to the KSP solver. You can do that or let Petsy deal with you. What is the, the beauty is that the interface at the top, it actually returns to you the same set of eigenvalues. There's nothing that you, you, you don't need to transform those uh, eigenvalues uh, back. Uh, so it's portable to a wide range of platforms, as I mentioned. It also, also has a C, C++, and different flavors of Fortran, you know, can call, uh, and has extensive documentation. And if you got Petsy, then it's very easy to install. Okay, so I want to thank uh, Jose for sending uh, the slides that I used to produce this ones here. And so let's take a look. Oh, actually, the first thing that I wanted to show was the. So if you go to Slepsy, this is under Axe, you can get to the Slepsy website. And then on documentation, so you have the user's manual, a PDF, which has a lot of explanation of, on the interface. And you have some related um, algorithmic choices and decisions that they, they made. And then the, the man uh, pages, just like like Slepsy, uh, uh, like Petsy, and then you can, you know, like if we go to EPS, you get the EPS list, EPS create, you know, and then you can start looking at some of the examples also. Online. Okay, so. I want to stop here this part and just ask, are there any questions? Uh, 
Um, so I think, Patrick, you asked me about the uh, Anastasi. Uh, I, I have loads of questions, actually. But, uh, OK. And there, there is one thing that I didn't mention, is that you can also interface to other solvers. You know, So the same way that uh, you can ask for other, so there are other packages that you can, you can, you can call from here. No, just in case. No questions? No, OK. So if you go to, let me see, Carver, Dornesk, Agave. So if I do a module load, uh, sub C, oh, so you can do always module avail sub C. And then it gives me all those options. Module load, sub C, 3.3, I'm going to use the G one. OK. <laughs> then three environment variables, you know, the ones corresponding to pet C should be there, the pet C arc. So, you know, when I, when I install uh, this library, for instance, in the nurse machine, because we have different users that are going to be, some are going to be working with complex arithmetics on with, uh, in very rare cases, people have us for a single, um, single precision uh, arithmetic. So what I do is that I create different, uh, can everybody see this? Sorry. Different architectures. So I usually, if this, is, this means this is the default uh, real. In some cases, you know, you'll see um, that I put complex, you know, Linux 8, complex G, which is the complex uh, arithmetic. Or, you know, if there is a, a single, then it will say single underscore G. So if we wanted complex, do we have to use sub C31? Uh, no. Oh, in this in this case, right? Because I didn't. I, I just haven't installed the yeah. Because it's this was a release like last week, and then immediately on the weekend there was a new thing that they they fixed. So then I just installed this too because Petsy was just going to be using this too here. So yeah, I asked Matt if he wanted the complex and he didn't want the complex, so we just used this. Uh, yeah, eventually there is going to be a 3.3 .3, uh, uh, complex. All right, so let me go to my home directory. So, let's see. So if I do a copy of slash so Dear slash um, source slash EPS examples tutorial. And I think this minus R here. So then you have all the all the um, all the examples in Slipsy. Um, if you open this, you could go to the uh, website, the web interface, and you have the exact uh, codes, the same codes, those HTML uh, files, which you can click and it gives you a lot of information about each of the, the functionalities in the code. And then there is the MEC file. Like if you want to modify or create your own uh, uh, EPS solver you know, um, uh, program, you can just modify this make file, you know, and then obviously we just do make ex1 and and then we will we will execute that. Oh, I have to use my account. I mean, uh, Run. 
I don't know if this code works fine. So, and I can do things like EPS view and gives you a lot more information. I can use the log info. So, because we are, we are running out of time, what I would like to do is, you know, if you, after the this this afternoon, I'll be around. If those of you that are interested, we can look in more detail some of this, these examples. Okay, and maybe I'll have time and I, I can install the complex, you know. So this is it. Uh, so I think we move to, is Eric, you're next, isn't it?